This is the issue, and I am the ghetto man. Today's issue, all Democrats are traitors. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Democratic Party has become public domestic enemy number one. Now, how could I say such a thing? Well, it's easy because all Democrats are traitors to the union. They're traitors to the United States Constitution. And how can I say that? Well, they promote democracy. They support democracy. And when you support democracy, you can't get more anti-American, anti-Constitution, and anti-freedom than that. Now, I took an oath to uphold and defend the United States Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And Democrats are a domestic enemy. Democrats hate the United States Constitution and have been promoting the overthrow of the republic since I can remember. The Democrats are and have always been this country's greatest enemy domestic enemy. Democrats are radical extremists, hell-bent on replacing our Republican form of government with a socialist, communist form of government known as the New World Order. The Democratic Party has many faces. Like an octopus, Democrats have many leftist, anti-American arms. They have created and support the radical left, which includes but not limited to the KKK, a white racist hate organization, which was created and still maintained by the Democratic Party. They'll claim it that they they, uh, are not associated to it anymore, and uh, we can prove that they are. There's another group. It's a Mexican uh, brown racist group that calls itself La Raza, and it also is combined with the Democratic Party and maintained through the Democratic Party. La Raza's logo, La Raza, which means all for the race and nothing for the rest. Can't get any more racist than that. Then you have Black Lives Matter, a black racist hate organization, and it too is maintained by the Democratic Party. The United States, and I, you know, I get so sick of this slavery argument. The United States did not create slavery. Slavery was everywhere in the known world. People were bought and sold and traded just like a commodity. Uh, It goes back to when the uh, Egypt was building the pyramids. There's been slavery. The one thing that people forget in this country and that includes Black Lives Matter and all the ones that support all these other racist groups, is that the United States ended slavery. We didn't create it. And slaves were owned by all kinds of people. They were owned by black people, white people. Slavery was, it was not really a race-based, one-color requirement. We didn't create slavery. Slavery was already in full force and effect. We ended it. And we have another black racist group. It's a communist group called ACORN. And once again, you'll see it tied in with the Democratic Party. Antiva, we've all heard about that, a violent anti-American, anti-freedom hate group who is hell-bent on killing freedom of speech and the Bill of Rights. And it, too, is supported by the Democratic Party. In fact, the... Antiva is the Democratic Party's version of Hitler's brown shirts. 
They go around and they, they start trouble uh, uh, and try to stop people's right to freedom of speech. It's just crazy. And uh, they, they intimidate. They beat people up. They're extremely violent. They are an exact duplicate. Exactly. The same thing that Hitler was doing with his brown shirts, the Democratic Party does with its Antiva. Now, lately, it's, it's had to back off a little bit and not support it so much because they are so anti-American and, and, and so violent that uh, they've had to back off a little bit. But rest assured, they're behind them 100 percent behind the scenes. Then we have the National Socialists, the Nazis, which we're always told that uh, they are of, uh, the, the, from, the, from the alternative uh, right well, the national, the national socialists and Nazis, that comes from the uh, National Socialist, Socialist Germers Workers Party. It's just another leftist anti-American hate group. And it, too, behind the scenes, is maintained by the Democratic Party. Then you have the real the racist, the, 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 the king of evil. You have Planned Parenthood. A racist so-called woman's health service started by a racist eugenicist and a KKK supporter named Margaret Sanger. Okay, now, which is interesting is people say, well, the Democratic Party, you know, uh, may have been there and started the uh, KKK, but they don't, ma- they, they don't maintain it. Well, that's ridiculous. If you just take a look at Hitlery Robin Clinton and her ties with the KKK and white supremacy, it's clear that the Democratic Party is still supporting the KKK. Hitler, in a video, you can Google it, she uh, praised um, Robert Byrd, who was, in fact, a KKK uh, member. In fact, he was, uh, I think he was like a grand cyclops or something, something like that. And he ordered over 500 hoods. I mean, the man was heavily involved with the KKK. And Hitlery, Hitlery Robin Clinton, she claims that he was her friend and mentor. You can go on the internet. I could play the video for you, but you could go ahead and find it yourself. She clearly said that she was a friend and mentor. And then there's other videos of Hitler and Robin Clinton who uh, admires Margaret Sanger, who was a known racist eugenicist, whose starting Planned Parenthood was part of her plan to be able to get rid of the minorities, especially the, the, uh, the blacks, which she referred to as, uh, you know, just uh, weeds that needed to be exterminated. And, 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 and Hitlery, who was going to be the, uh, the, uh, the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party, is clearly a white supremacist. She clearly uh, has, uh, it has ties with the KKK, either through Robert Byrd or through uh, Margaret Sanger, who also spoke for the uh, uh, women's uh, division of the KKK. See, it's a whole lot easier, you know, to abort black babies. It's a whole lot easier to abort them than it is to burn crosses in the in the yard and uh, run around with hoods and lynching black people. You can't you can't kill very many of them as you can with abortion. So Margaret Sanger, she really was uh, beneficial to helping to bring down the black population uh, in the South uh, in her time, and she is uh, still to this day. In fact, Planned Parenthood, this is a, these are facts, murders over 1,800 black babies a day. Now, that's a, pretty, that's a lot more efficient than what the KK was doing before Planned Parenthood. Planned, excuse me, Planned Parenthood. And there are many, many more hate groups that vote the radical, racist, democratic, socialist, communist ticket as well. The Democratic Party... Its motto should be divide and conquer and destroy the United States Constitution. That's what it should be openly saying. The Democratic Party always, now this is something you will see over and over again, they always accuse its opposition of what they are doing. I mean, just look at Hillary Robin Clinton's book that she just put out. She blames everybody else, everybody. I mean, we're talking about a party. The Democratic Party is like a dysfunctional family. 
It's completely unhinged. It, it's, it's completely perverted. It has no foundation in, in reality whatsoever. There has never been a more vile and disgusting hive of perverted anti-American hate groups than those who support the Democratic Party. How can a Democrat, how can a Democrat take an oath of office to uphold and defend the United States Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, when their political party promotes the overthrow of the United States Constitution? Answer that question. Democracy, historically, is the road to dictatorship. There is no room in our free republic for the vile stench of democracy. Democracy isn't even a form of government at all. It's a process. It's a vehicle. And in itself, cannot, under any circumstances, ever be a permanent form of government. Now, let me uh, explain that a little bit. Because everybody, you know, talks about democracy as a form of government. Well, it isn't a form of government. It never has been a form of government, and it never will be. It's a process by which you get something else. Now, I've explained this before, and I do it in a simple version. It's very simple like this. We set up a democracy. Everybody has a vote. Okay, the majority of the people want to vote in communism. Okay, so 51%. Of the, uh, of the people vote in commerce, communism. Now, do you have a democracy anymore? No. You have communism. You voted it in. And when you did, you, you divorced yourself from the democratic process because there is no democratic process in the communism or socialism. There isn't any. You're going to do what the state says. The state owns everything, including you. Okay, now how do you turn that around? You can't. Once you've, once you've moved from the, used the democratic process to move into the communist uh, form of government, there is no more democracy. I mean, the only time democracy could possibly work, the only time, is, I don't know, in a small gathering, you know, like a bunch of people in the, in the, uh, in watching TV and they want to order a pizza and they take a vote as to which pizza parlor they're going to purchase it from. That's about the only time democracy even works. Other than that, as a form of government, it is completely incompatible with any type of a free society. Uh, It's been said that it's uh, two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. That's democracy. Okay? This is why... All of these anti-American groups gravitate to the Democratic Party. Now, you know, the nice thing about living in our free republic is that if you don't like it here, you don't have to stay here. The United States doesn't have an outigration quota. You can leave anytime you want to. There are plenty of democratic, socialist, communist countries that you can move to. In fact, I hear that Venezuela is nice this time of year. See, you don't have to stay here and do it our way. If you don't like it here, take your anti-American, anti-constitutional, tradist, democracy, socialist bullshit and leave. And don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Our nation's founders would have tarred and feathered every one of these democratic, socialist, communist, anti-American traitors. Now, I am a constitutionalist. Now, constitutionalists are neither left or right. What we do is uphold and defend the visions of our nation's founders and the United States Constitution. Simple as that. We are not all anything. Alt-left and alt-right are a false left-right paradigm. The alt-left, the alt-right, is a creation of the left. Divide and conquer. Alt-left and alt-right are the left. The alt-right is really the right side of the radical left. They call it the alt-right 
to confuse people into thinking that the alt right is a conserv is the conservative right, when in fact the alt right is nothing more than a radical faction of the democratic socialist communist left. A constitutionalist is someone who is a good citizen. He's being a good citizen, or she. It's a citizen that is being a patriotic, law-abided citizen. The purpose of the leftist alt-left, alt-right is to distract and shift the blame of the Democrats' anti-American, anti-Constitution, racist, violent past onto citizens who oppose the democratic overthrow of our constitutional republic. History clearly shows that the founders of our republic despised, they absolutely despised and hated democracy and the democratic process. To them, to the founders of this nation, to them, democracy is the vilest form of government there is. Not one of the worst forms of government, but the worst. And I couldn't agree more. Those of us that support the U.S. Constitution are exposing the Democratic Party for what it really is. It's a cesspool of lies, deceit, perverters of the law, moralist, anti-American, constitutionalophobic, I made that word up, constitutionalophobic, radical Marxist, progressive, socialist, fascist, racist, eugenicist bigots. That's your Democratic Party. And remember, a Democrat will never let you forget what race you are. In fact, to admit that you are a Democrat is an admission to treason. I have a question for the Democrats. I have a question for you right now. What part of and to the republic for which it stands don't you understand? Okay, what did our nation's founding fathers have to say about democracy anyway? Thomas Paine, let's listen to what he said. He was the father of the American Revolution, and he said, quote, a democracy is the vilest form of government there is, unquote. Article 4, Section 4 of the United States Constitution says, the United States shall guarantee to each state in this union a republican form of government and shall protect each from invasion which they're not doing now when they're letting people come across the borders illegally without being vetted and while going through the, the legal process of becoming into this country uh, and uh, becoming either a, uh, a resident alien or eventually becoming a citizen. If you let them walk across that border, that is an invasion. And we are not being protected. We're not getting our republic form of government and we're not being protected from an invasion. And on application of the legislator or the executive, when the legislator cannot be convened against domestic violence. And you can find that in Article 4, Section 4 of the United States Constitution. You will not find the word democracy anywhere in the document, nor will you find anywhere in our, our nation's founders that had anything good to say about democracy. And democracy is what's destroying this country today. It's what these people who promote democracy, they are out to completely destroy this country. We're not talking about a civil war here. We're talking about an open and notorious overthrow of this country, a coup d'etat. James Madison, the author of the United States Constitution, said this, quote, democracies have ever been spectacle of turbulence and contention, have ever been found incompatible with personal security or the rights of property, and have been, have in general been short in their lives as they have been violent in their deaths. James, excuse me, John Adams, he said, quote, remember, democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and murders itself. There never was a democracy yet that didn't commit suicide. Can you see where we're headed? Do you see where we're headed? And the reason why you don't understand this is because we practice the 10th plank of the Communist Manifesto, which is free education in public schools. So you were taught 
You were taught a foreign and alien ideology. They don't teach American history anymore. What they do is they teach the children how to be be insurrection, rebellion, and treason. That's all they teach. They teach the children how to overthrow the union. The job of the teachers in the in the schools and the and the professors, their job is to to teach people the true history of this country, not to go ahead and sit there and openly and notoriously and think that they can do it, break the law and promote the overthrow of this country. Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton asserted, quote, we are now forming a Republican form of government. Real liberty is not found in the extremes of democracy, but in moderate governments. If we incline too much to democracy, we soon, we shall soon shoot into a monarchy or some other form of dictatorship. Now, Hamilton, in his last letter that he ever wrote, he warned that our real disease is democracy. Now, he warned that. I have been, uh, I guess, almost six months now we've been putting out these shows. We did a, I did a, originally I did a show uh, on democracy, but, you know, when, I'm, when I see that uh, how we're headed here and how the Democratic Party, with all of its, its communist, socialists, uh, and racist, bigotist, fascist, all, kind, it's all these factions that, that it has, that it's all in the Democratic Party. When you look over there, it's completely insane. Now, I'm not saying that the Republican Party uh, doesn't have any real problems. They do. We have the same uh, leftist, communist crap going on over there with John McCain and uh, 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 Mitch McConnell and uh, Lindsey Graham and uh, 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 Paul Ryan. These these people are rhinos, which means Republicans in names name only. They're traitors, and there's more of them in there. They're in there. But see, the part, the thing that we have to deal with right now is that the Democratic Party is openly violent right now. They are trying to openly overthrow. When when you have people who stop you from exercising your right to free speech, whether you agree with them or not, they can exercise it. But they can't go out there and start beating you up and and intimidating you and stopping you from doing that which you have a God-given inalienable right to do, and that's to express your opinion. These people are dangerous. They're violent, and they are trying to start not only a civil war, but this is an open coup d'etat. Now, in classifying the forms of state. Now we're going to go back to 384 to 322 B.C. Aristotle distinguishes governments that are carried out or carried on, quote, with a view to the common interest, unquote. He said, of of true government, there are only three. And I looked at this over the years. You know, I wanted to, you know, see, when you really break the governments down, there are only three. And Aristotle said there was the kingship, the aristocracy, and the constitutional form of government. And constitution means it's contract or covenant. It's synonymous. When you say constitution, you say contract or covenant. What the constitution is is a contract between the people in government, and then that contract is carried out by the government and is limited through that contract. And we've discussed this in great length before. But Aristotle went on to say that each form of government has its perversion, of which there are also three. You had for the kingship, you had a tyranny, a tyrant king that would impose his will and dictate everything over the people, and and his, his, his word was law. And then for the uh, aristocracy, you have the oligarchy, which is the aristocracy is a group of people who are are ruling, but an oligarchy is a corrupt group. It's like having, it's about basically, uh, you know, kind of where we are now. We just have all these people that are in there that just do what they want. They ignore the Constitution. They ignore all the law, and they do it in the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch, which is the worst. And then the judicial branch tries to claim that it is the final word in the matter, implying that there aren't equal separations of power between the three branches of government, that the judiciary somehow is the final word. 
which means that they trump the other two branches, which is complete bullshit. Okay, and then he said the third one, dealing with the constitutional form of government, it's perversion. It's perversion, perversion, perversion was democracy. So the perversion of a constitutional form of government, according to Aristotle, is democracy. The degenerate form of a constitutional government, or polity, as it's called by Aristotle, is democracy. I have searched the history all the way back to Aristotle, and I can't find anything good to say about democracy. Not one thing. It doesn't work, except to be used as a vehicle to get to something else. So if we can destroy our republic, bring in the democratic process, which that witch Hitlery Robin Clinton is now promoting, she's saying we want to get rid of the electoral college so they can have a, 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 an open democracy. We aren't a democracy. That's why the, the, elect, the electoral college is there. Here's Clinton openly and notoriously saying we want to get rid of the electoral college. What she's saying is I want to destroy the Republican form of government. I want to destroy the Constitution and bring in the vilest form of government there is, democracy. Alexander um, Fraser Teitler, he was a British sor- uh, a historian. Uh, excuse me, historic historian. You can't say that word. And after the founders of our republic, uh, after our founders established our republic, that was one of the things that he was. He really commended the, the you know the founders of our our republic on is the fact that we chose to become a republic as opposed to a a damnable democracy. And this is what he said. He said, the democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves largest from the public treasury. Now, does that sound familiar? Isn't that exactly what's happening right now? He says, from that moment on, The majority always votes for the candidates promising the most benefits from the public treasury with the result that a democracy always collapses over loose physical policy, always followed by a dictatorship. Alexander Fraser Teitler. So you see, this is why the Democratic Party is pushing democracy. This is why we have the problem. These people are pushing for dictatorship. And they can get it if they can get our, uh, to dispose of our republic. The Constitution of the United States is still the supreme law of the land. That is the law. Even though nobody in government and nobody in this country follows it anymore, and that there are several amendments that have never really been uh, ratified that, are, that have been put in place that are you know, uh, plaguing the American people. That's the law. And until that constitution is gone, any person that promotes the overthrow of it is a traitor. They are a domestic enemy. They are as bad or worse than an enemy that, that, that charges our borders and, and, and physically comes in and assaults us. These are the most wicked, evil, demented people that you could ever, ever come out of the minds of a reprobate is the people who promote democracy and those people who are promoting this overthrow through all those organizations that I, that I uh, uh, listed earlier. And there are many more. Don't, don't kid yourself. The ones that you can see out here are not the only ones that are involved in this democratic coup d'etat. In a democracy, and I've said this before and I'll say it again for those who haven't watched any of my other videos, in a democracy, your rights are subject to the will of the majority. In a republic, your rights are protected from the will of the majority. Doesn't matter. Everybody in the country can say, we're going to vote away your right to have guns, and you can't do it. That was secured under the Second Amendment. 
And until that Constitution is gone, and even if it is gone, it's a natural inalienable right. That's your right. And the majority can never vote it away. These traitors like uh, Dianne Feinstein and all of these uh, gun grabbers that are out here, they are traitors. It is the duty of every veteran, every citizen in this country. Number one duty is uphold and defend the, the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And if you're not out there promoting our Republican form of government, then you are an enemy. See, there's a big difference. Being being in a democracy and being subject to the will of the majority and being a republic where your rights are protected from the will of the majority. The word treason means violation of of allegiance owned to one's sovereign state, betrayal of one's country. Every person that goes into public office has to take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. That's number one. The president's job isn't to protect me and protect my protect protect me from all these you know, anything that could bad could happen. His primary job is to uphold and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And he better be searching them out within his administration, and he better be himself obeying the Constitution. And the legislature should be passing laws that are in compliance with the Constitution. And then these goddamn worthless piece of crap judges, most of these judges that are in the, sitting in the, uh, the federal level were, were appointed by these traitors, the Democrats, and they're up there. Basically, we no longer have the rule of law. They, the judges have become law. They're so corrupt that they just completely ignore their job to apply the Constitution. They say, well, we're here to interpret the law. No. If you have to interpret the law, then the law is void for vagueness. Nobody is bound to a law that they can't uh, understand. And if the court has to interpret it, then the law is no good to begin with. The job of the United States Supreme Court or any court, anybody, is to apply the law to the, to the facts, the law, not to get up there and start to say, well, we're going to change it now. That's not their job. And they are not the final word in the matter. The final word comes back to we the people. We are the final word. The Constitution of the United States is the final word. Not the legislator, not the legislator and the exec, and the judiciary combined. They are not. They are not the ones who are, are, to, to, are, are going to sit here and, and, and pose their will upon us. If they're not obeying the Constitution, then they're not keeping their uh, oath of office. And if you're a person in this country that is, is living in this country and you're not supporting our Constitution, why the hell are you here? Now, the nice thing about the democratic, socialist, communist left is that they have clearly defined who our nation's domestic enemies are. There is no room in our free republic for the vile stench of democracy. And for the record, I am a supporter of the rule of law. I hold and defend the U.S. Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I am a constitutionalist. I support no political party. I don't support the Dema Republic Nazi Party. I'm a political atheist, and I want nothing to do with one party, the one party with two names. If the founders of our republic hated democracy and established a constitutional republic, how is it the Democratic Party can openly promote democracy, which by definition is an act of insurrection, rebellion, and treason against the republic? And how can they do this and not face face charges for these crimes? And they are crimes. When you sit out here and you promote bringing turning this into a communist country, you are a criminal. You're a traitor. You are a traitor to the republic. You're a traitor to every person in this nation, every citizen. Most of the laws that are passed today are unconstitutional. And most of the court rulings are unconstitutional as well. And most of the executive orders are unconstitutional. 
Now, in reality, the general misconception is that a statute passed by legislators, legislators bearing the appearance of a law constitutes the law of the land. As I told you before, the U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And any statute to be valid must be in agreement. It's impossible for a law which violates the Constitution to be valid. This is succinctly stated as follows. Quote, All laws which are repugnant to the Constitution are null and void. That can be found in the court case called, Supreme Court case called Marbury v. Madison, 5 U.S. 137. It's an 1803 case. Quote, When rights secured by the Constitution involved, are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation that would abrogate them. And that comes from the case called Miranda versus Arizona. It can be found in 384 U.S. on page 436. And the Miranda case is the one that brought in the Miranda warning that you you the you had to you know inform the the person that the that was accused, the suspect, if he was being arrested, that he had a right to remain silent, that anything that he said could say or do could be used against him in a court of law, that he had a right to have counsel or an attorney to be present, and blah, 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 all the way down the line. That's where that came from. It's one of the, the longest cases that I ever read. It's over 100 pages long. And I suggest that if you haven't read it before, Google it. You can pick read, read Miranda versus Arizona and listen to what the court has to say about what's going on. This is this is an old case. I mean, they they were putting hot cigarette butts on people's uh, out on people's backs to get them to confess. I mean, this is why we have these safeguards because we have people within our government who could care less about upholding and defending the law. They're tyrants. They hate the Constitution. Okay, here's another quote. An unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties, affords no protection. It creates no office and is in legal contemplation as inoperative as though it had never been passed. And that's Norton versus Shelley County. This is another United States Supreme Court case found in uh, Book 118, U.S. on page 425. Quote, another one. The general rule is that an unconstitutional statute, though having the form and name of a law, is in reality no law, but is wholly void and ineffective for any purpose since unconstitutionally dates from the time of its enactment and not merely from the date of the decision so branding it. So here you have, and then it goes on to say, no one is bound. No one is bound, quote, no one is bound to obey an unconstitutional law, and no courts are bound to enforce it. That's 16th American Jurisprudence, 2nd second Edition, Sections 177, and uh, I think that, yeah, page 177, you can look that up if you want yourself. Now, you see, we, the people, this is us, we, we're the people, we must never subject ourselves to any law that is repugnant to the United States Constitution. It is time to put a stop to the left's evil democratic ways. And I'm not joking around about this. These people are dangerous. They're traitors. It's time to dismantle the Democratic Party. And I think it should be taken further since they openly and notoriously promote the overthrow of the United States of America. They should all be arrested and it tried to, according to the laws that deal with insurrection, rebellion, treason, and those, 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 those type of laws. It is time to dismantle this, this, this party. This party has no place in our free society because these people are nothing but, but communist, socialist, fascist pigs. And they want to overthrow this country and they want to bring in the same thing that we saw in the 20th century that murdered over 200 million people, communism and socialism. Well, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you're politically correct, then you're legally wrong. And if you're not part of the solution, damn it, then you are the problem. And I'm telling you right now, we're not going to put up with this any longer. 
It's time to take a look at what's really going on here and understand that the people that are involved in the Democratic Party, the entire Democratic Party, there is no saving it. It's very purpose. It's foundation. It was founded on the purpose of overthrowing our republic and bringing in a goddamn democracy, which then would move us in through the democratic process into communism or some other uh, ism for that matter. Anyway, I am the ghetto man and thank you for watching. There's going to be a war today. Corrupt government power is going to pay. They've taken all our rights away. Now they're going to see the judgment day.
Revolution is how it ends. Arrogance and pride will end its reign. Planet Earth will once again be saved.